Sports tonight, Sunday, July 20. 10 out of 10, the Parramatta Reels continue to relive their glory days. Get out of my way, the Audis dominate the Super Tourers at Amaru Park. The Wallabies prepare to cane the Kiwis and silence the critics. And princely perfection, boxing's number one show pony produces another royal knockout. Stay with us for Sports Tonight. Hello, I'm Matthew White and welcome to the Sunday edition of Sports Tonight. Later, we'll go from the fast lane to the swimming lane. We'll check out the British Open and check in at the half-pipe at Perisher Blue. Also, the Aussies fine-tuning for the fourth test and a play of the day that's worth the wait, literally. But first, round 16 of the ARL and a day highlighted by thrillers. North Sydney surviving a second-half fight back from the Gold Coast. A field goal, the difference between the Saints and the Rabbitohs while 10 tries were scored at Parramatta Stadium to mark the Eels' 10th straight victory. They build it as a bumper game, and it took only minutes to live up to expectations. Albert has fumbled it. They've not gone Parramatta. The ref wasn't sure, so he checked with his in-goal judge and the touch judge before giving Paul Carriage the try. Five minutes later, the Johns brothers combined to send Mark Hughes over and the Knights were in front. Mark Hughes! Newcastle went further ahead when Carriage made a mess of the bomb and Alan Craigie on the spot to score. Then more controversy with Parramatta's second try. Shane Werrett touches down, but was he onside? Five tries in the first half and Newcastle held the advantage. The game played at a hectic pace and the Chief needed some air because Parramatta was storming back. Four tries in a row in the second half. Poor carriage from deep in his own half to put the Eels in front by ten. Well, would you believe it? The Eels with a stunning second half beating the Knights 28 to 22. At Bear Park, North, on and one of their most loyal, Mark Soden, leading the side out. But things didn't start too well. The Chargers scoring first, Marcus By too strong. He's reached out with the right hand. That is a Gold Coast try. Then the Bears hit their straps, running in five tries, three of them to this guy, Ben Eichen. This is becoming embarrassing for the Chargers. Well, the Chargers must have heard them. Trailing 30-4, to four, they ran in five tries of their own in the second half to get the margin back to two. Well, this must be one of the greatest comebacks in rugby league. The Bears look shot until Greg Florimo sparked them again with three minutes to go. Mal David Hall, what a rugby league try. North Sydney out of jail, winning 34-28. And at Cogra, the Saints scored five first-half tries to lead the Rabbitohs 26-4. But on Fight Back Sunday, Souths gave themselves a chance with three second-half tries. Jamie Ainsco's field goal with ten minutes to go, proving the saving grace for St George. And now let's take a look at the ARL ladder after today's matches. The Seagulls are still two points clear of their nearest rival, Parramatta. Gold Coast and Illawarra rounding out the top six. Sydney City drops back to eighth spot, while Balmain and St George are on 14 points. South Queensland still with just two wins for the season. The second wave of Super League's English clubs to hit our shores have found the World Club Challenge is more about mathematics than anything else. The Hunter Mariners kept a 100% record in the challenge alive in front of small numbers in Newcastle, while Auckland and Bradford added another 76 points to the equation. The Warriors with a calculated victory. Super League's World Club Challenge has almost been the saviour for the Auckland Warriors. Struggling badly in the Aussie comp, playing the Poms has given them a chance to rake up a few wins. And the first try, very quickly given away to Lee Odenrun. And what a difference a bit of confidence can make. Auckland thrashing Bradford for their sixth win in seven games. All up, they scored ten tries, and the 50-point margin keeps them in the finals race. None enjoyed the outing more than Gene Namu, a personal tally of 29 points. In Newcastle, spotting faces in the crowd wasn't hard, but this one was a surprise. Johnny Raper supporting Super League? No, there to watch his son side, Castleford, take on the Mariners. But it wasn't a pretty sight early. Castleford, though, improved. More committed this time, and it paid dividends. 
the Mariners scored again to lead 18-4 at the break, and they stretched that out to 22-4 early in the second half. The far side, and Gay went up with it. He's left it behind, and it's going to be a simple try to Kevin Iroh. Castleford, desperate to avoid another Super League blowout, pounced on a Hunter mistake to score their second try. But the Mariners doing just enough this time to remain unbeaten in the World Club Challenge. Sports Tonight and West End Draft in a league of their own. Now to AFL and just the two games today with North Melbourne edging back into the top eight. The Roos comfortable 56 point winners over the bottom place Demons. While the Fremantle Dockers scored a thrilling six point victory over the Western Bulldogs to revive their finals aspirations. The past dry conditions at Subiaco suited the home team and they started accordingly. Chisholm weaving his magic. Not bad, first blood to the Dockers. Paul Hudson kept the Bulldogs in touch. Quality finishing giving him three for the quarter. And that's a great effort from there. The Dockers led by 13 points at the first break, but the Bulldogs wouldn't go away. Chris Grant continuing his great form. And Abraham's goal after the half-time siren maintaining an 11-point buffer for the Dockers. That lead was quickly erased when Croft kicked the first two of the third quarter, the second resulting from a Luke Toyer trip. In a classic and often fiery encounter, the Dockers kicked again. Abraham snapping truly. And Clive Waterhouse matching his effort after getting a hand pass he wasn't expecting. He stumbles, he kicks from 35. He's got it, I think. With the Dockers holding on to an 11 point lead at the last change, the first goal was critical. Skipper Peter Mann providing it for Frio. When Kingsley Hunter gold, the Dockers looked home. And that may be there, that may be the ball game, it's a goal. But the Bulldogs summoned one last effort. Make that two. Minton Connell's goal closing the gap to seven points with just under a minute left. 35 metres out, he kicks the goal. But the clock ran out on the Westerners. Fremantle's six-point win reigniting their finals hopes. At the MCG, North Melbourne were desperate to end a three-game losing streak. But met stern resistance early on from the Ds. It's a ripper, I think. The Roos managed to steady in the second term. Peter Bell kicking one of the goals of the year. North led by 26 points at half time and ran away with the match in the second half, running out comfortable 56 point winners to get their premiership defence back on track. To the AFL ladder and Geelong still the clear leaders after round 16, the Western Bulldogs next with five teams on 36 points. North Melbourne, as we mentioned earlier, back in the top eight. To the bottom half of the table and West Coast, Carlton, Hawthorne and Fremantle all on 32 points. Melbourne though, still the cellar dwellers. On to Rugby Union now, the Wallabies have recalled fiery number eight Michael Bryle in their bid for Bledisloe Cup revenge against New Zealand at the MCG next Saturday. The New South Wales back rower was named tonight at the expense of Troy Coker. The scrum to take on the powerful all-black pack also includes flankers Daniel Manu and Brett Robinson with Richard Harry and Andrew Heath the props. The team announcement follows last night's thrilling tri-series opener and criticism from some of the game's former greats, including a call to axe John Eels as skipper. Today's Wallabies working not only on defence against the All Blacks, but also against criticism from Australians of a past era. Ex-front rower Steve Fernane claiming the current team lacks passion in one Sunday paper. Mark Eller calling for the return of Phil Kearns as skipper in another, which also featured a critical column by former All Black captain Andy Hayden. It's just typical of people who've, who seem to have an axe to grind. I mean, a lot of them live in the past and... You know, Ella was a great player and so was Hayden, but it doesn't make them necessarily great analysts of the game. And I mean, if they, if they ignore the statistics, well, you know, let them ignore the statistics. I mean, I'm very happy with our record. Since Smith took over last year, the Wallabies have played eight nations, losing just one test against South Africa, but all three clashes with New Zealand. Those two teams will prove tough opponents once more in the Tri-Nation series after turning on a thriller in the opener. The Springboks stunning early, up 10-0 after just six minutes. A great solo effort by Frank Bunce gave the All Blacks their first try and an easy conversion.
The home side with 60,000 fans gunning for them, fired passes like bullets and eight minutes from half time led 23 to 7. But as is their way, the All Blacks remained composed under the pressure, created the opportunities and charged back into the game, scoring two tries in the space of three minutes, going to the break just four points down. The match, later described by New Zealand coach John Hart as an epic, went to the wire. Bunce's second try tying the score at 26 all. Penalty and field goals took it to 29 apiece, then 32 all. Carlos Spencer took his personal tally to 20 and his team to 35. Yanni De Beer had also been near perfect with the boot, but unlucky with the one that mattered. New Zealand winning 35 to 32. There is still plenty to come here on Sports Tonight. Shortly, motor racing and super action from the Super Tourists. Plus, Kenny Hackett, our new distance sensation, makes a splash. Stick around. Have you got something to say about sports tonight or do you want to comment on a current issue in sport? Call our feedback line on 1902 555 305. That's 1902 555 305. Or you can email us sportstonight at network10.com.au. The best feedback comments will be featured on Friday's edition of Sports Tonight. On to cricket now, an opener Matthew Elliott has hit a half century on day two of the Australians tour match against Middlesex. In their final hit out before the fourth test, the tourists at lunch are one for 108. And they're chasing 305. Captain Mark Taylor, the only man to go, bowled by spinner Keith Dutch. Blewett is 16 not out. Defending Australian Super Touring champ Brad Jones staged a great comeback in the championship today at Sydney's Amaru Park. The Audi driver won both races and he's now third on the points table. He may have failed to win pole position yesterday, but today Brad Jones wasn't about to be second to anyone. He was focused on maintaining Audi's unblemished record at Amaru Park and despite getting caught up in traffic late in race one and allowing Paul Morris to close in, the goal was achieved. It was all in the start. I got a great start, got past Paul and really our lap times are very close and um, it just seesaw in the traffic, so I was very happy the way it went. I think uh, Brad had a couple of tents over me. I had a problem with my uh, left front tyre in the race and a lot of understeer, and uh, the traffic went my way a bit, which allowed me to sort of hang on a bit, but uh, he definitely had more car speed. While the factory teams fought it out at the top, the independents displayed some of the closest racing all year. Stephen Richards, Cameron McLean, Jason Richards and Mark Adderton all together and none willing to give in. After winning the start in race two, Paul Morris had an unplanned spin. Audi's Cameron McConville appearing to turn Morris around, the spin sending the new championship leader from second to fifth, while the Audis had a day to savour. Jones and McConville getting the one-two finish, and Jones moving into third in the championship. It's certainly good to be gaining on them rather than gaining on us. And four races to go, anything can happen. And uh, we're certainly a lot more comfortable with it now than we were at the start of the weekend. In Toronto, the Scotsman with the Italian name, Dario Franchitti, has won pole for tomorrow's Kart World Series round in Canada. Mark Blundell will start alongside Franchitti, making it an all-British front row. And Australia's Mick Doohan has qualified on pole for tonight's German 500cc Grand Prix, getting his sixth successive pole this season. Spain's Carlos Checa will start from second, ahead of Tadayuki Okada. Darrell Beattie, the best of the other Aussies, while his teammate Anthony Gobert fell heavily in qualifying. All the action of the 500s tonight, right after Sports Tonight. Swimming and our new distance star Grant Hackett has easily won the 1500 metres at the Australian Short Course Championships in Melbourne tonight, while Matthew Dunn set a new national all-comers record in the 200 individual medley. Matthew Dunn couldn't have been more relaxed before launching into the fastest short course 200 metres medley ever swum in Australia. Dunn knew that with the closure of Melbourne State Swimming Centre, this would be his last ever swim at the stadium. And he decided to go out with a piece of history. But I think it'll be the last Australian record in this pool. So it's, uh, it was something that I was thinking about this afternoon. I was 
You know, I'd like to be able to get that. Breaking his own all-comers record, Dunn touched in 1 minute 57.05 seconds. An outstanding swim giving him confidence for next month's Pan Pacific Championships and for the World Championships in Perth in January next year. My whole fo focus at the moment has been narrowed down to the World Championships and all I want to wish for, I guess, is to win the World Championships in Perth. Another swimmer with his sights set on Pan Packs and the World Championships is 17-year-old Grant Hackett. In the absence of Kieran Perkins and Daniel Kowalski, the teenager pushed himself to a world-class 1500 metres freestyle. It's very hard, you know, you've got to push yourself to your limits and it's really difficult when you haven't got one, someone alongside you there. Hackett's time, 14 minutes 47.44 seconds, was the fifth fastest in the world this year. But the high-achieving schoolboy had hoped to swim faster. You know, at the beginning of the week I wanted to settle down and go into the 1440s, but I did a couple of PBs in the 200 and 400, so I was expecting maybe to go a PB there, but it just, just didn't happen for me. Stick around on Sports Tonight. Coming up after the break, our master of the amateurs is Crown. Plus, a legend abandons the Tour de France. Welcome back to golf and the final round of the British Open at Royal Troon has just got underway. We're going to take a look at the leaderboard as it stood after round three. Jesper Parnovic took the overnight lead two shots ahead of Irishman Darren Clark, but he sure had shared third round glory with Tiger Woods. Who else? He equaled Greg Norman's course record of 64 to move to three under. Also eight off the pace is Robert Allenby, who was the best placed Aussie. After two days of struggling against Royal Troon's uneven fairways and hazardous gorse, Tiger Woods emerged the master. That's absolutely extraordinary. I've never seen anything like it. Just three shots in the par 5 16th, the first time anyone has eagled the hole. Yeah. A birdie on the 17th serving notice, he's ready for a final day challenge. Oh my God. And incredibly, he says he can do better. I think so. Uh, if I took away my two bogeys, I shoot 62. <laughs> I just can eliminate the mistakes and then keep putting well. Overnight leader Darren Good Clark cut. made Good light cut. work of the front nine, racing oh, to 13 under. But bogeys on the back nine helped Sweden's Jesper Parnovic close the gap for a five under par 66 and a two shot lead. Robert Allenby found form to be the best placed Australian, matching Tiger Woods on the back nine to finish three under. Stuart Appleby showed early promise with an eagle at the fourth. Third shot and in. But the shot of the day belonged the day to Fred Couples, who stayed in contention with his no eagle either. chip at the 11th. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. The face of amateur golf is set to change as the inaugural master of the amateurs wrapped up at Royal Pines today. Local golfer Barry Miles took out the prestigious event and he also took home the coveted green jacket. Taking a five-shot buffer into today's round, Miles was virtually unchallenged. John Neeson, his nearest rival, four shots behind. The home favourite overwhelmed by his new title. All you've got to do is get past the post, so I'm very happy with that and I'm very honoured to be the the first the first winner of the green jacket and while some defied their amateur status in. In. others faltered under the pressure of professional conditions the amateurs you know they look at the professionals and say geez we wish we were there that's what i'm doing i'm bringing the amateurs to where the professionals um, standards were and just uh, giving them the opportunity to be there and feel that pressure of um, sponsorships television radio um, and playing a championship course from the black back markers. You're up there and you're playing a, um, a friendly game of golf. You seem to hit the ball as soon as the camera turns up or the spectators turn up, the old knees start to tremble. But as I said, it's been fantastic day. And great news for Queensland golf tournament directors so delighted with the first Master of the Amateurs that it's set to become an annual event. I'll be back. Not a good weekend. It's just a great excuse for a holiday. Would you come back next year? Oh, yeah. oh definitely. definitely, definitely. Next year, I'm coming back here and I'm going to have taken lots and lots of lessons and I'm going to be in for the money next year. Of the seven people that I brought up, uh, everyone has already said to me, Robert, I want to be on the list for next year. And while Miles adjusted to the honour of the coveted green jacket, others celebrated golfing history to the tune of the John Farnham Band. To the Tour de France now, an Italian Marco Pantani has again showed his climbing prowess claiming the 13th stage in the arduous French Alps. 
a 200 kilometre endurance test up the daunting Alpe d'Huez. It was too much for champion rider Chris Boardman, who pulled out 54 kilometres into the stage. He won't continue the tour. Pantani led the charge, fending off dangerous spectators as well as his rivals. The Italian finishing 47 seconds ahead of yellow jersey holder Jan Ulrich. Australia's Patrick Yonker, 17th. Ulrich now has a 6 minute 22 second lead over the rest of the field. The best placed Aussie overall though is Neil Stevens at 59th. He's 70 minutes behind the leader. A thrilling final of the Australian Open Squash Championship in Adelaide this afternoon saw world number three Rodney Isles claim the title over fellow Queenslander and defending champ Brett Martin. The match going right down to the wire with Isles eventually taking the title 17-15 in the fifth game, giving him his first ever national championship. We are into the home stretch, but you stay there. Our play of the day is on the way. Plus, princely predictions come true. Nassim Hamid retains his world title. Welcome back. Boxing's most precocious but entertaining talent, Prince Nassim Hamed, has kept his promise. The British wonder boy told the world he would stop Argentina's Juan Cabrera in round two of their world title fight. And that was never in doubt from round one, where he did as much posing as punching. But the blows that connected were a sign of things to come. Hamed all power. The ref stopped the fight early in the second. The Prince winning his 28th contest and retaining. His IBF and WBO featherweight crowns, and what about the Dax? Time now for the play of the day, and tonight it's off to America, where some of the biggest names in heavyweight belly flopping went all out and let it all hang out as they tried to empty the pool in the annual state championships. That guy gets a five, the other guy gets about an eight. But the one that gets a 10 just for giving it a shot is this woman. She gets the play of the day. Let me tell you, thankfully, we're out of time. The 500s are next. I'll see you next week. Good night.